Now, step into the incredible, amazing future as we go exploring tomorrow. And now, here is your guide to these adventures of the mind, the editor of Astounding Science Fiction magazine, John Campbell, Jr. The essential character of any frontier you explore is that if you get into it and stick your neck out, you get it lopped off and there's no help. The frontier is the place where there isn't any reserve, where there isn't anyone to help you if you get into trouble. There is no support. Tonight's story is a story of a true frontier. You know, sometimes the frontier lies just the other side of a doorway. It doesn't seem very different, but it can be the difference between life and sudden death. Uh, we are in a somewhat different position. We can summon support here. I can push my little push button here and summon our supporters. You know, when we think of that glamorous future, we sometimes tend to forget that things cost money now and things will cost in the future. Let's suppose that there are ships and they are going out between the worlds. They carry emergency supplies for expeditions that may be in trouble on some of the planets that are being explored. But they can't carry an extra lot of them. It costs too much. They carry parachutes, in effect, to drop them as they flash by the world that's in trouble. Little parachutes for space, a plastic bubble with a tiny motor, just enough to lower it down to the planet without destruction. Uh, they'd probably use human pilots to do it, too, because, you know, a human brain is the lightest of all computing devices. It's lighter than an electronic computer. It would be cheaper and wiser to use human pilots to drop these little plastic bubble parachutes of space to a planet in trouble. Let's consider one where there's an expedition that's gotten into medical trouble. The men are sick and they need a serum that they don't have. They've called for help from one of the passing interstellar liners. The liner has stopped for a moment, dropped one of its little space parachutes, gone on its way, flashing on to some other star somewhere else. And in that emergency dispatch ship, that little space parachute, the pilot discovers... Somebody who shouldn't be there is in that supplies closet. The gauge is never wrong. It says there's a living human body inside that closet radiating heat. Come on out, chum. Open that door, I'll open it. Come on out. Oh, no. Oh, all right. I, I give up. Now what? Sit down. All right. Well, you still haven't told me. I, I mean, what happens now? Do I pay a fine or something? What are you doing here? Well, I just wanted to see my brother, that's all. Your brother? Mm -hmm. He's on Woden. He's with Group 2. Oh. I haven't seen him for 10 years, ever since he went there. What's his name? Cross. Jerry Cross. Do you know him? Only his name. I've never met him. Oh, I was only eight years old when he left. What was your original destination aboard the Stardust? Mimir. I had a job to go to. You knew you were breaking a rule when you stowed away on this ship. Oh, I knew I was breaking some kind of regulation. Is that all it means to you? Well, I'm There not... was a sign posted there. Didn't you see it? A sign? Yeah. Oh, you mean the one that, that, that said unauthorized personnel keep out? That's the one. Oh, well, I guess I saw and it. And ignored it. Oh, come on. Now, look, don't be so grim. How did you manage to stow away? Oh, it was easy. I, I just saw my chance and <laughs> acted on impulse. I, I saw there was plenty of room in that closet, and so here I am. Yeah, here you are. Oh, please, don't worry. I'll be a model criminal or prisoner or whatever it is I am now. And I'll pay for my keep, too. And when we get to Woden, well, I'll... I'll make myself useful. Quiet. Sorry. Do you have an identification disc? Yes. Give it to me. Well, my, my name is Marilyn. Marilyn Let Cross. me have the disc. 
Okay. Will I get it back? No. Oh, but I'm sorry, I... I need the information on it. I have to put it all in my report. But when you've got all the information, surely I'll get it back. I need it. Do you know why I'm flying this ship to Woden? No. No idea? Well, I... I know the Stardust got a message. I, I suppose you're taking extra equipment. I'm taking serum. Oh. If I don't get that serum to Woden, six men are going to die. My brother, too? Not if he's with Group 2. He's 28,000 miles away from all this. On the opposite side of the planet. Opposite side? Well, then how will I get to see him? You're not going there. Not go I'm sorry. Look, I, I don't understand. You are going to war. Yes. Well, then if... But you're not. You're going to leave this ship. You mean I won't get to see Jerry? I'm afraid not. Oh, please. I told you I... I'm sorry. Well, uh, what are you going to do, radio some other ship to have me take him back? There are no other ships to radio. Well, then... Don't you understand? No. You can't stay aboard this ship. Oh. Well, what am I supposed to do? Jump overboard out into space? You won't have to jump. You'll be jettisoned. You won't feel a thing. Sometimes the universe seems cruel. I think that's a mistake. It isn't cruel, but it is ruthless. You must learn the lessons. And once you've learned them, you're all right. Unless you forget them. I'm afraid... That girl forgot that there were frontiers. That there were places where there was no help. You are joking. These are not things you joke about. Oh, no, you can't mean all this. There is nothing anyone can do for you. <laughs> it just doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I mean, I just can't believe you're really serious. I... But you are. You mean that you're going to make me die? It's the way it has to be. No. no human being in the universe can help please, you. Please, oh, please. Nobody wants it this way. Nobody would ever let it be this way if it were humanly no. possible to change no, it. I can't believe I it. I told you, this ship is carrying fever serum to six men on Woden. All six will die unless I get I there. I know, I know you told me. A small ship like this one is provided with barely enough fuel to get to its destination. If you stay aboard, your added weight, once we hit gravity, will cause it to use up all its fuel before we land. That means, in simple terms, you and I will die and six other men will die waiting for the serum. Is that it? That's it. Just that? We don't have enough fuel? Yeah. So I must die alone or take seven other men with me? That's how it stacks up. Nobody really wants me to die. Nobody does. Well, then maybe. I, I mean, are you sure nothing... Nothing can be done for you. I just can't believe this is real. Less than an hour ago, I was a passenger in the Stardust. Now I'm on this ship. And I'm going to die. And nobody... That's not true. We all care. <laughs> oh. It's different out here. It's not like being back on Earth. I'll never see Mom and Daddy again. I'll never see Jerry. I'll never see anything again. Hasn't, hasn't your brother ever written to you? Yes. What did he talk about? Things. I mean, well, all the things he was doing and how much he wanted to see us all again. Didn't he ever tell you about frontier law? What? 
Look, out here, we live by a different set of values. I don't know anything about frontier law. You ignored a warning. Out here, you can only make that mistake just once. Oh, a lot of mistakes have been made. And a lot of men have died making them. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know about frontiers. I don't know about fuel. Or what was going to happen to me. I don't want to die. Why should I have to die? Just because I wanted to see my brother. <laughs> What's the use of trying to make her understand? What do I do? Quote the regulation to her. Paragraph L, Section 8, Interstellar Regulations. Quote, any stowaway discovered aboard an emergency dispatch ship will be immediately upon discovery jettisoned into space, period, end quote. And what good would it do to her anyway? Okay, so H amount of fuel will not power an EDS with a mass of M plus X safely to its destination. How could she understand that? Look at her. 18 years old, brown curly hair, blue eyes, weight 110 pounds. And to me, she's just the unwanted factor in a very cold equation. <laughs> Crying won't help, will it? I mean, it. you're going to radio my brother. If you want me to. What will you tell him? Nothing. I'll let you tell him. Oh. I'm almost afraid to hear his voice. You make him sound so near to me. And all the time he'll be so far away. Just a voice. That's all he'll be, just a voice. I'll call him anyway. All right. Yes. Warden, EDS 34G11, emergency. Come in, Warden. Group two, identify yourselves, please. This is a call for Jerry Cross. Please come in. Jerry? Jerry, where are you? Jerry, why don't you answer? Jerry, they're going to let me die. Keep quiet. <laughs> they're coming on now. <laughs> Whatever happens, a man will always try to find some way out, even when he knows it's impossible. He'll still make a try. But sometimes, particularly on the frontiers, you're up against the problem that there isn't any way out. You're up against it. Wait, I, I didn't hear. I... He said goodbye, little sister. I had so much more to talk about. He knew that. Was it really him? It was your brother. His voice sounded changed. Ten years ago, he was a little more than a boy. Now he's a man. Voice has changed. Did, did, did I sound frightened when I talked to him? No, you sounded fine. Oh. How long do I have? Oh, a little while. What'll happen to me? Afterwards, I mean? Nothing, I guess. I'll just go on floating in space, is that it? Something like that. May I see? See what? Out there. Can I see it on the view screen? Yeah, sure. There. Well, there's nothing there. Just nothing at all. Well, there's some stars over there. I, I didn't see them. I was thinking of Mom and Daddy. They don't even know yet I'll never be going back to them like I promised I would. It's funny, the things you remember. Like the time when I was only six years old and my kitten got run over in the street. And the way Jerry held me in his arms and told me not to cry. And when I woke up in the morning, there she was on my bed with a brand new white fur coat. Just like Jerry had promised. It was a long time after that when Mama told me Jerry had gone to the pet shop at four in the morning. He got the man out of bed and told him if he didn't produce a white kitten, somebody's neck was going to be broken. <laughs> so the man found a white kitten for me. You'll be gone soon. The little hand on that gauge will go back to zero and the equation will be balanced again. Is it time yet? 
What? Is it time yet? Time? For me. Almost. How will it happen? You'll go into that compartment. It's an airlock. And that's about all. Oh, no, it can't be all. You'll do something. I'll simply push a button. And I'll be shot out into space. I told you, you won't feel anything. Yes, yes, you told me that. I'm very grateful. You're all right? I keep thinking... Everybody has to die sooner or later. It's no worse for me than anyone else, is it? Except most people don't know when it's going to happen, and I do. You understand I have no power to help you. No power anywhere could help you out here. All right. If there was just one... But there isn't. I know. Jerry understood that. Yeah. Your brother's quite a guy. He said everything will be all right. It will, won't it? Everything, yes. All right, I'm ready. Tell me what to do. When I pull this lever, that door will open. Just walk into the chamber. Please hurry up. Do... Do I walk in now? Yeah. cold in here. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. It doesn't really matter. Goodbye. You've been awfully kind. Goodbye, honey. Please close the door. Well, yes. there's no hatred, no malice in what I have to do. I know. Bye now. <laughs> S34G11, calling Group 1 on planet Woden. Come in, please. I'm landing in just 10 minutes. Sometimes you have to find out such things as whether a man's eyeballs fall out when he's decelerated too suddenly. These men aren't tough. They're just curious. Join us again next week on both Wednesday and Friday nights when John Campbell returns with more of his fascinating talk and stories while exploring tomorrow. Tonight, you heard Mason Adams and Joyce Gordon in our cast. Script was by John Fleming, from a story written by Tom Godwin. Produced and directed by Sanford Marshall, here in New York.